Morning. I'm uh, honored to be here with our uh, brilliant minds in our educational policy outfit. We've got uh, Chairman uh, Diaz and Chairman Baleka with us, along with uh, Representative Dan uh, Donalds, who's uh, going to be presenting the bill today, uh, Chairman Sullivan, Chairman Matt Valor, and uh, uh, Rayburn. <laughs> Chairman Rayburn. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, today we want to unveil uh, one of our new educational policies, basically in looking in at where kids are struggling, where are kids having problems uh, getting a world-class education. One thing that stood out to us is that we uh, currently have about 47,000 reported incidences of violence and abuse in our school system. And those children are forced day in and day out to go back to that school where they're subject to violence and abuse and what we have learned, and nobody really argues, is that any study has shown that where there is intimidation and violence and abuse, uh, that child's learning pretty much ceases to exist. And so what we're going to do is unveil today, uh, with Representative Donalds, a HOPE scholarship that will give those kids the opportunity to go to a safe learning environment and, and pursue that world-class education that we want for every uh, public school child, uh, child in the state of Florida, all children. So uh, with that, Representative Donalds. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to be somewhat brief, this initiative is to make sure that every child in our state, if they're subject to abuse, whether it be battery, physical assault, sexual assault, hazing, bullying of any kind, um, that there will be a process for them to be able to leave the current school that they're in, and they would have two options. They would be able to either go to another public school within the district, or they would be able to go to a private school of their choice. Um, quite simple. To be very simple, frankly, if you're subject to abuse, it is very difficult for you to be able to cope, to concentrate, and to do what is very hard, which is simply learn, which is what we want all of our children to be able to do in our educational system. And so what this is going to provide them is the opportunity to have that break from a very traumatic uh, experience, and then also to be able to continue their learning in a new environment with a fresh start. Uh, we think that it's in the best interest of all of young people, of all students, um, to be able to have the ability to be their very best. And so I'm honored to work with the speaker and the leadership team in the education uh, uh, silo here in the Florida House to do what's in the best interest of the 47,000 students in our state that have experienced such trauma and also, and I want to make sure we're clear on this, the estimated 67,000 students in our state that have not reported such incidents. You see, they have a future too. And it is our responsibility to make sure that every child in our state gets an excellent education. And we think that the HOPE Scholarship will provide the option and the alternative and the pathway for those students to be able to be their best and to reach for the stars and to, and to live out their God-given potential. So with that, um, take any questions you may have. So can you explain like, the circumstance, or I guess more specifically, mm -hmm. where this will apply? How it uh, great question. So how it will work is if a student is experienced a trauma, let's say that they were uh, being bullied, they were, they were involved in a fight, um, which uh, actually the majority of these situations are fights that happen on school campus. Um, they were on the bus going to, they were on a bus going to school, there was a physical altercation, there was bullying that took place. What would happen is, is the student and or the parent will report that to the, to the uh, school, to the principal. And so that begins a 15 day window where after 15 days, the student would become eligible for the HOPE scholarship. The, the district would notify the parent um, of what their options are, whether it be going to another school in the district or their ability to go to a private school. And how much is the scholarship for? Uh, the scholarship um, would roughly be, in the, it roughly be what the current FEFP allocation is, but I want to be clear on this, that the HOPE scholarship will not be funded out of the FEFP. So it just gives the student an opportunity to continue their education at another environment. Please, me my question. Uh, how, how is it going to be? Is it going to be a tax credit scholarship? How is it supposed to work? Uh, well, we're currently, that's a great question, and thank you for that. We're currently working on the funding mechanism now, um, but I want to assure you that it's not going to come out of the FEFP. That's one of the, the killer decisions we're making. How much money total? Excuse me? How much money total estimate? Um, current estimate, that's something we're also working on right now, but we don't have the full number, but we'll have that very shortly for you. Partly driven on the number of students, mm -hmm. right? So we, I mean, so the number of students is known. we know that 48,000 incidents were reported uh, last year, uh, but we know there's 
tens of thousands of more incidents because we get those from the Department of Health when the doctors turn in the forms and they interview high school students, you know, or have you been a, a victim of violence, the number's much greater. So how many of those folks get their issues addressed at the public school system or then participate in the Hope Scholarship? That'll be determined, but we will we will fund it outside the FEFP, much like the Purple Tax Scholarship. Thank you. Listen, that's a wonderful question. Typically what happens in these situations is there's a report made um, by the student or the parent to the school. That begins that process. So you understand two things. There's going to be an investigation, which typically happens anyway, and the school conducts that, the school district con uh, conducts that. But once you make that complaint, after 15 days, you become eligible for the scholarship. And so that gives the student the opportunity to get out of that environment. Typically what happens now is, you know, I, I recall in my own days being in high school, if you're dealing with a traumatic event, what happens is you just start dropping out. You don't go. You try to find ways to avoid that one class that's a problem. You spend the extra time, you know, unfortunately, in the cafeteria. Or you try to find some, some segment of the school where you can hide away from either the person that's the attacker or whatever the case might be. We don't want students to have to deal with that kind of trauma, so we want to give them the avenue to do it. To your point specifically, the, the uh, student or the parent would have to simply report the incident happened, and that begins the investigative process which happens with any of these incidents already. I'm sorry, repeat your question. Um, if the student goes through this process, mm -hmm. the parent reports the incident, okay. Yes, you would. You would. You would get it after 15 days. There's a 15-day uh, holding period, and after that, then you would get it. And then, the then it's left up to the. I mean, the parent of the child is making a determination that now this is a, a tremendously hostile, physical, violent system for my child, and they make that determination. They they're going to make that determination. Is this a learning environment for my child, or should I take the Hope Scholarship and go somewhere else? And, we, and I fully trust parents to make that decision wisely. And I just kind of want to find that as well. I mean, obviously there are, are different ranges of bullying, some much more severe than, than standard teasing, which is still not acceptable. Um, but is there an element of this to address, I guess, say bullying in general in schools, like any sort of policy that the school should be implementing so this doesn't happen in the first place? Well, I, like, I think that your question is to a broader point. Um, can school policy stop bullying from happening, happen, happening, excuse me. Um, frankly, the answer is no. You know, these, you know, we have laws in the books for a myriad of things, but those happen still. What we're saying is, is that when an incident occurs, do we want the child to be trapped in the same school? And the answer to that, and I think everybody agrees, is no. We want to provide that child an alternative and a, and a way to get out of the school. It's not just going to a private school. It's also being able to go to another public school in the district, but we want to make sure that the state provides that child the opportunity to continue their education just, in a safe environment. And, and before, just to add, the, keep in mind that of, of the 47,000 incidents that, that we know were reported, the overwhelming majority of them probably 40,000 of them are violence. It's not, it's, it's not a simple being picked on, it's a physical assault, fighting, uh, a sexual assault. Um, that, that, that's the overwhelming majority of them. It's not, it's not, there's not a lot of subjectivity to that. So that 47,000, Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, can get, we can break down the entire 47,000 by the category as reported by the school system. Okay. Yes, these are reported incidents in a school setting. Could be on a bus, as, as Representative Donald said. Right, but if, if it happens on the way home from school or at the bus stop um, instead of on school grounds, can you still qualify? I think uh, they would absolutely still qualify. And this, and this student, uh, you'll probably see it in the next 30 days. I mean, we're working on it now. I think we're really close on language. Um, Chairman Donalds, I mean, Representative Donalds is working with uh, Chair Baleka and Chair Diaz on, on funding and, and the way to do it. But the, but the co construct of it is exactly as we said. Is there going to be a mechanism? Oh, sorry. I was wondering about the funding you made reference to the structure. Similar to the corporate 
Well, it has to. If it's outside the FEFP, the only funding mechanism I'm aware of outside the FEFP that has a scholarship in existence for the most part is, is um, uh, as, as it's funded, is the uh, corporate tax scholarship. So it would be funded very similarly to the corporate tax scholarship. Is there going to be a mechanism for DOE? What specific tax is really what we're looking at? No, there's no constitutional issues. It's so, no, if it's outside, if it's outside the FEFP, it, there, it's constitutionally never comes into the state coffers. Not a Bush v. Holmes issue. Um, is there going to be a mechanism for DOE or somebody to track the results and the education of these kids? Yeah, there would be a, there would be a similarly a, how we would do it with a scholarship granting organization. That again, all of that stuff, all the accountability that's in existence with the existing programs, all of that accountability and measurement would be in existence with this. Hope Scholarship, and we'd be able to measure it. And, and just like we saw with the Corporate Tax Scholarship, they just had a, a tremendously detailed Urban Institute study that compares these kids and what they were doing with the with, with, with the previous educational setting they were in, and they found out that after four, four years or more in the scholarship, uh, tax scholarship program, 40% are more likely to go to college. So, so those measurements are out there, and what we know from those measurements is they're wildly successful. When you put a kid in a good, a good safe learning environment, good results happen. Yes. All of the oversight, all of the accountability would be the exact same as the same accountability that we have in the existing corporate tax scholarship program. What would you say is anyone who says that this is, this is just another a layer of, the, of what would happen during last session with, you know, obviously with your displeasure with the performance of, of traditional schools, um, that you're just pulling more students out of the traditional school system and putting them into, into private schools? Well, I've never said that I'm disappointed with the performance of as a blanket statement are public schools. I'm a product of public schools. Elementary school, middle school, high school, university, community college. Uh, I've gone to every form of public schools. They are, and I think in many ways, um, as we've seen, it, as the results come in, our public schools offer some of the greatest education in the state of Florida vis-a-vis -vis private or charter. The question is, those that aren't living up to the standards, those that are failing kids, schools that are failing kids because of abuse and violence, that should never happen. And that's why we want to give that those children in those situations in the public school system, nothing's perfect, the opportunity to go out there and get a world-class education free from violence, free from abuse. There, there is a, there's a mechanism for discipline for those for those students, and, and to the extent that we can go back and improve that mechanism, sure, we'll look at it, and we'd love to have input from the superintendents, principals, and everyone on how we can improve that system. It, Hopefully, they'll bring that the, they'll bring that testimony to the committee. It, it sounds like you think that there is still an existing problem, though. So how do you? I, I don't think we know. Oh, okay, so how do you <laughs> there's there's no subjectivity to this. We have the data. That's. A, you're asking me. You're asking. You're asking me how we how are we going to get rid of badness in the world? That's a great question. It's a beautiful philosophical question which we wrestle with every day on every level. I'm asking how you solve problems. That you, you, no, you're asking how do you get badness out of people? It's not doable. I think it's first of its kind, isn't it? Is it first of its kind. It would be. Just sitting down, trying to, uh, honestly, I think if you look at all of us in this back row, every single person has been committed. We, you have the sliver of time to go out there and make a difference in people's lives. And, and all of us are focused on more than anything else. If we could change one thing and make it perfect in the state of Florida, giving every single child a K-12 education that's world class right. would solve, every, for the most part, would, would address every single problem we face in the state, whether it's our revenues, whether it's how much money we have for the environment, whether it's um, our, our job preparedness, uh, luring businesses to the state, whatever it is, that's the number one way we can solve it. And so all of us have gone through with that commitment, where are we failing? Where are we coming up short in giving that opportunity of a world-class education to every single child? And, and so when we sit there and all of a sudden you're looking at all the different data points, we look at them all the time, every single chairman back here goes through them, and all of a sudden it comes up that there's 47,000 reported incidents of violence and abuse to school children, anywhere from K to 12th grade. You're talking little kids getting vi a subject to violence and abuse. And we know from all the studies that if you're a fearful of stepping onto a school campus, if you're worried for your own safety, you will not learn.
you're not going to learn. And so when we see that, and we again, I want to say it's 47,000 incidences that were reported. There's probably what we know from the medical community and their interviews with these kids in private behind closed doors with a doctor and a patient, we know that their, the reported incidences are, are probably over 100,000 total. So how do you get those kids a world-class education that takes Florida and makes it second to none to any single state in the union? That's, that's what our goal is. And so, yes, we sit down and we go through all that stuff over and over, trying to find ways to afford that opportunity to every single child. And that's why we call them Hope Scholarships. That's why we call it Schools of Hope. Because what you're finally giving that child is hope that, yes, they can go out there and have their slice of the American dream. They can go out there and have their slice of economic opportunity. I, I, we haven't spoken I haven't with them yet. So, Speaker, um, on the on the data, is there? Since I don't know, have you, you looked at it to see are these clustered in certain areas or in schools? I don't. I haven't looked at that yet. That's a great question. We'll look at that though. Uh, That'd be interesting because that'll go. I think back to uh, Daniel's uh, question, and that is, if there is clusters, then clearly that cluster needs to look at what's going on in the rest of the state in terms of discipline. And uh, if I could switch gears for a little bit, this is Orlando. Yeah, uh, I did, had a chance to review it, read it, reviewing it with staff and figuring out what our next steps are and what additional data we'd like to get from them. Are, are you satisfied with their response? They seem to indicate that they, they gave up some... I think I'll be, satis I'll be satisfied when I feel like I've been, they have been completely and utterly transparent with us. I do not feel that right now. Do you think you'll ever get there? Uh, I don't know. Well, I, yeah, I do. I think there's a way to get there. <laughs> they won't like it, but there's a way to get there. <laughs> <laughs> So I, want to let, I want to let anyone else talk real fast on the educational stuff. Does anyone want to say a few words, Chairman? No. Uh, we just look forward as we develop this and bring it forth. I don't think there's any other passionate advocate for our, our kids and for every student that Representative Donalds and, and grateful for the Speaker's leadership because he has tasked us to um, where we do fall short and where we do have gaps. and and kids are being left behind or kids are in environments that's not most conducive to um, reaching their full potential, what are we going to do about it? And he calls us to action um, in terms of don't just look at a problem, but really come up with what kind of pathway can we put these kids on um, to be successful. overall um, at the scholarship because uh, we have a whole method now we have over a hundred thousand low income 100 percent low income 70 percent minority 70 percent I think a single parent family children that are in a scholarship program when those kids go into that scholarship program the net effect to our budget is a is a boost to our to our budget not a, not a cost right but that's done at the beginning of the, that's known before the no no at the beginning of the year uh, or at the beginning of the budget year we count that because of uh, our our budgetary we don't dynamic budget we we static budget so we count that as a loss but over the course of that fiscal year it's actually more money that comes to our state coffers because it's less cost uh, than than the existing FEFP and that's all we handled yeah yep it will be a revenue increaser not a decreaser for the state thank you very much